CPM Pellet Mill Dye Change Procedure. Please note before you begin, only trained and qualified personnel may change a dye on a pellet mill. Anyone in the immediate area who is unauthorized should be informed that a dye change is in progress. The plant lockout tagout program should be used. Always wear personal protective equipment, including safety shoes, gloves, hard hat, and safety glasses. First, tell the immediate supervisor that you are going to perform a dye change. Lock out the pellet mill. Use the HOA switch to ensure that the pellet mill will not start. Inspect all hand and air tools before using. Do not use any damaged tools. Open the pellet mill door and place the cover over the pellet discharge opening. Loosen the rolls away from the die face as much as possible. Move the die hoist out to the center of the die. Pinch points can cause personal injury. Keep hands clear when rolling the die hoist. Inspect the chain assembly used to lift the die for any damage. Inspect the die hoist cable for damage, such as kinks or frays. Check that the pulleys are in good condition. Wrap the chain assembly around the die and attach it to the die hoist. Tighten the die hoist cable until there is no slack on the die lifting chain. Loosen the die clamp bolts. The die clamp segments are heavy. Use proper lifting techniques when removing or replacing. Remove the die clamps one at a time. The die clamps will be hot. Caution should be taken to keep feet clear. The die hoist cable can now be taken up or let down as needed. Work the die past the rolls while pulling forward. Care should be taken to keep fingers away from pinch points and feet from under the die. Once the die has been pulled forward enough to clear the rolls and feed plow, carefully lower the die to the floor with the hoist. Remove the die hoist lifting chain from the hoist cable. The die should only be rolled on a smooth surface. Remove feed on the floor or any other objects that could cause the die to topple. Roll the die out of the way to the die storage area. Clean all feed from the die cavity and quill flange. Then sweep up the area where the new die will be rolling. Visually inspect the quill flange and die clamps for signs of die movement. Use the proper gauge to check the wear stage of the quill flange and die clamps. Notify your supervisor if either the quill flange or any of the die clamps are at or beyond stage two. Roll the die to be installed up to the pellet mill quill and rolls. Place the die lifting chain assembly around the die and attach the die hoist cable. Raise the die carefully with the die hoist. Keep your body and hands clear of the die should it fall. With the die lifted, push on the face of the die toward the machine, moving slowly past the rolls until the die lines up with the driving key on the quill. Leave the hoist chain and die cable attached. Put the first die clamp segment on the quill stud. This will hold the first die clamp in position while installing the second and final die clamp segments. Be sure to match the letters on the die clamp segments. As you tighten the die clamp bolts, use care to maintain equal gaps between the clamp segments. Once the segments have been attached, snug up the clamp bolts and remove the die hoist chain assembly and cable. Push the die hoist rail back to its resting place and snug the hoist cable up to the point that it will not interfere with any moving parts. Finish tightening the die clamp bolts. Unless otherwise instructed, torque die clamp bolts to 350 foot-pounds. Adjust the rolls as instructed. Remove the plate covering the openings to the cooler. Shut the pellet mill door. Unlock the pellet mill disconnect and turn on the disconnect switch. Make sure all die changing equipment is properly stored away. The pellet mill is now ready for use.